It was actually one of our young non-Quaker members who made this suggestion. This young member said, well, let's have Quaker-style meeting for worship in bank lobbies. And so we started doing that, and many people found it to be an extremely profound experience of prayer, sitting on the floor, even if the manager is calling security. Quakers in my yearly meeting, Philadelphia yearly meeting, had for years been struggling with the, the challenge of a climate that's going increasingly out of control. There was a gathering of Philadelphia area Quakers in the summer of 2009 when everyone was abuzz around what do we do with climate change? What does stewardship mean to us as Quakers, as friends? And so out of that, people started meeting in living rooms. Um, and again, mo it was mostly Quakers who were meeting, uh, though not all, saying, well, what would it look like for us to draw on this legacy of being very powerful people who were disrupting a system that's harming us? And so out of that was born this group, Earth Quaker Action Team. Earth Quaker Action Team tried to figure out where to start if we had this passion about doing something to shift the environment. And also there was an analysis growing about the economy is wrapped up in what we do with the environment. So in looking around and sampling potential places to start, PNC showed up. PNC Bank was a bank that a lot of Quaker organizations had money with um, because they were originally founded through this merger of a Quaker bank and an additional bank. So as a target, it made a lot of sense because there was this connection to a number of different Quaker organizations and communities that had their money with PNC. And our demand to PNC was that they stop funding mountaintop removal coal mining. Mountaintop removal coal mining is not your typical coal mining. You are raising the top of a mountain. You are blowing it up and going in and picking out the little bits of coal. It takes very few jobs. I mean, an entire mountain can get taken apart by 18 people. And so where traditional coal mining was hundreds to thousands of jobs, this was reducing jobs to about 18. And the downside in, on top of just coal mining is that the top of that mountain gets pushed into the valley next to the mountain, which is often where the water beds are. And so people's water sources get poisoned by uh, minerals that are in the ground that are activated by the dynamite process and the moving process. It's a lot of machinery. It's very capital intensive. So banks have been pretty majorly part of the ability to do this kind of coal mining. Um, and what we found is that PNC Bank was a major funder of mountaintop removal coal mining in Appalachia. So in, in any way you look at it, <laughs> this is a, an offense against the planet, it's an offense against people. It's where economic justice and climate justice coincide. Let's tackle it. This bank that had Quaker roots, this bank that called itself the greenest bank in the business, was in fact blowing up mountains uh, to get coal, which is a major contributor to climate change. Uh, so we thought, that's, that's not cool. <laughs> like, we can't actually let that slide. Uh, calling on our own belief in our integrity, we decided to call them out on it. So we looked at each other and said, who better than Quakers should tackle a formerly Quaker bank and tell it, stop doing this nasty thing? Well, so we, did, we, we went and saw the regional president and said, stop doing this nasty thing. And he was visibly <laughs> angry with us for the sheer arrogance of telling a bank what to do because bankers like to think that they are in charge of the universe. <laughs> so we understood it's going to take a lot of pressure. And so we embarked on a campaign <laughs> that increasingly damaged the brand of that bank. Went from writing letters uh, 
speaking out at uh, shareholders meetings, like going to the Q&A session and saying, there's a problem here. And from there, we kept going. We said, you can't stop us from actually sharing the truth with people. And so there came a point where people were going into bank lobbies and holding meeting for worship and really praying for PNC to shift to the values that it declared it had. We walked from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh across Pennsylvania. Um, we held worship in PNC shareholders meeting. Um, at one point, we shut down a shareholders meeting in about 15 minutes. And then the next year, PNC scheduled their shareholders meeting in Tampa, Florida. And it was through a rich network of Quakers that we showed up in Tampa, Florida. And some Florida Quakers showed up uh, and disrupted the shareholders meeting there. We did 125 actions during this campaign. Uh, it involved a 200-mile walk across Pennsylvania to confront them in their headquarters in Pittsburgh. We grew the campaign from a living room size to 13 states. And it was very clear, it became very clear to the top leadership by year four, the top leadership of PNC, that there, there was no stopping us. It was just incredibly powerful to see people stepping up and finding out that as strange as it may seem to have a Quaker meeting in the lobby of a bank, there's something incredibly powerful about that. Um, that we actually get to be in spaces that corporations want us to think we can't. It's not our place, when in fact it is our place. It is our place. Toward the end of the Bank Like Appalachian Matter campaign, like the last three or four months, our allies who knew more about investment and were watching PNC started to give us word that they're probably going to stop. And I don't think any of us really quite believed it. Um, I know I, like, it, I didn't quite believe it. After five years and over 125 actions, PNC Bank changed their policy on mountaintop removal coal mining. And part of what's dramatic about that is to realize that this is a bank that nets over $4 billion a year. And our little group had an annual budget of about $100,000. It's incredibly satisfying to know that you've come so far, that we came from taking on this task that seems a bit impossible, you know, taking on a large corporate bank and making demands that they didn't want to meet and actively did not meet for four or five years and then them yielding to us like that's a that's a very powerful feeling for me the success of challenging pnc is more success not for earthquake or action team but for people fighting for justice and so being able to have that story to share that story with others and to remember that we actually can win is huge it was just sort of this moment of gratitude for everyone who'd committed to the campaign and for me just clarity that we can't accept the world the way it is and it can be changed so we have to set ourselves to that task five years 125 actions it was a very very exciting campaign people learned so much from it that it's possible to tackle the seventh largest bank in the country when you're an, uh, an organization is big enough to fit in a living room, it takes persistence. And it takes also tremendous concentration of effort on the part of the participants. What we found was that by focusing on a particular target with a particular demand, and then as individuals focusing our energy in one campaign, we were able to move a, a, a kind of mountain. The bank was. <laughs> I never felt hate in my heart for anyone at PNC Bank. Um, I think what I felt was conviction. I felt that this was the most important thing I could be doing in that moment. Holding a bank accountable for destruction was a pretty powerful way to bring love into the world. And 
to me, there was just an integrity in using our actions and not just our words to say, this isn't acceptable. And we know and believe that you can do better. We Quakers actually have in our legacy, our history, it's in our DNA to take on directly the power systems. And um, we can be troublemakers again. In fact, we must be troublemakers once again. We forget that because we, we worship in silence and we you know, use passive resistance and all of these things, um, you know, we forget that in fact, Quakers are very bold and pretty outspoken and like to you know, raise a lot of hell. Um, and that's what Equate does. That's what they did with the PNC Bank campaign. That's what they continue to do. Um, and I think that that's a really important role for Quakers to play uh, in society. I think that you know Quakers need to cause a ruckus but, and do the right thing. I'm here at the Friends Journal office in Center City, Philadelphia. It's very quiet right now because everyone has gone out to lunch. Just wanted to say thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. You can subscribe to the project by clicking on this button over here. You can support us for as little as $1 per video. That button is just below me. You can see all the videos we've ever released down here. Thanks again for watching and have a great Thursday.